Hi, so let's go into video two then. So last time we did the kind of basics, a simple function to differentiate. Now, get a bit more tricky. So we're, we're thinking now very much about you know, what is differentiation? What are, we, what, are we, what are we doing it for? That was before very much the process. Okay, so how we get from a function to a differentiated function. But what is differentiation all about? So before we get into this question, just have a little um, think with me. Differentiation about the rate of change. Now, what does that actually really mean? Okay, so if I've got a function, let's say this is my um, say this is my quadratic. Let's draw something like this. Yeah, we are thinking about the gradient of this function. Okay, so the gradient along here, we've got negative gradients, don't I? Because we know a line that goes this way has got a negative gradient, and a line that goes this way is a positive gradient. A line that's just flat has no gradient. So I've got negative, negative, negative. I've got no gradient of a turning point, and then positive, 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 positive. So the differential will tell me what the gradient of the line is. So if I was to, for example, draw draw this out, draw out the differential gradient. Base. See, I've got um. So say this is x, and this is, we come to this later on. But say this is x and y. I'd be saying, okay, well, at zero, I've got my stationary point, don't I? So at zero here, I have no gradient. Now, this is my line of dy by dx. So say this is same dy by dx is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all the way down to zero, and then negative 1, negative 2, negative 2. So I know at zero, right, at this point here, I know I've got zero gradient. And I know before this point, I've got negative gradients, and after it, I've got positive gradients. So I'm going to have a, a graph, a differential graph that looks something, oops, something like that, because this line here is going to return negative gradients, and this part of the line is going to return positive gradients. You also notice that we've gone from a power of two parabola to a power of one straight line, because each time you you come down the powers, you know, if we differentiate from x squared, we end up with two x. I've gone from a parabola to a straight line, and that's why you can visually kind of visually see that. So think about that when you're when we're doing these questions. Okay, the rate of change, the differential is all about the slope of the um, of the curve. Okay. So let's start. So let's start. So express in the form a. So this is great. This is tying in with your um, what's it called? Completing the square. So I've got three x squared plus 24x, plus 15. I want you to write that in a complete the square. Okay, so I'll say, take up my common factor of 3, so 3 squared plus, so I'm going to make 8, 16, 24, plus 50, very good. And then I'll say, right, I need to half my middle term, so 3 stays the same, and it's x plus 4 squared. So what I've done here is, I've halved this middle term, and then I get x plus 4 squared. And the general rule is that the 50 stays where it is, but what I need to do is take away the thing I've generated in this bracket. So this bracket here, if I was to break it out, and obviously you don't usually do this, but I'll just show you. If I was to break that bracket out, I've got x squared, I've got negative 4x, negative 4x, and 8. So x squared, I want an x squared, that's fantastic. I'll do this in a different colour, just to see. So that's fine. I've got negative 8x. Um, sorry, <laughs> that's a positive. Sorry, that's my positive. I want positive. 8x, there we go. So I've got positive 8x and I've got positive 8x. So I've got that, that's fantastic. However, just sir, I've also made 8. I do not want this 8 in the bracket. When I write it like this, I have I've turned this into a function that's got an 8, which I don't want. And that's why we take away I oh, sorry, oh, two mistakes. Sorry, two mistakes, it's not 8, that is 16, of course. Oh, please you just restart this video, but I can't bother to apologize. Um I've, got, I've generated a 16 that I don't want. So I need to take away the 4 squared to 16, but also that 4 squared is going to be times by 3. So you always want to take away this bit multiplied by this bit. So I'm going to take away 4 squared multiplied by 3. So what's that? 4 squared, 16 multiplied by 3, 6, 12, 18, 48, 50 take away 48. Obviously, because I'm speaking and uh, chatting, I'm unable to multitask, and that's me now completed the square. Fantastic! So that's a nice little um, three marks, and then it says find if um, 
f dash x. Okay. So we're thinking that's quite good. That was that was bad. I'll do f dash x. So f dash x is going to be equal to three x squared plus twenty four x uh, plus fifty. Excellent. Okay. So given that that right, that's quite a nice wee two marks, isn't it? There we go. Easiest two marks you'll get in the paper there. And then it says hence or otherwise explain why the curve is increasing. Now this is asking us when it says hence or otherwise, it's kind of saying, well, look at what we've just done. So we have shown that the differential of this function is this. And we've shown you can rewrite that like this. So what we've actually done there is the question is trying to get us to think about and visualize the curve. Okay, so if I was to look at this curve here, where is my turning point? Well, the turning point is change the sign, stays the same. So negative four plus two, so it's over there. And it's a positive x squared, so it's going to be a happy face. Okay, so this is my differentiated function. If this is dy by dx, this is x, and this is f dash x, that is what this function looks like. That's why we do complete the square to get the turning point. Let's say, well, hence I always explain why it's always increasing. Well, it's always increasing because if you were to take any value of x, if I said x is negative uh, 5, whatever it is, let's go over here, I'm going to return a positive value. If n negative 4, I will return a positive value, all the way to its lowest value, positive. Positive, and keep going and going and going. So you're always going to return a positive value because its turning point is above the x-axis. So how do we say that for the SQE? How does SQE want that to be written? Well, they want you to say something along the lines of, well, x plus 4 squared is always going to be greater than or equal to 0, mate. Always, always. If I square that, it's always going to be greater than 0. So I know that this is always above the x-axis, okay? And that's for all values of x. So a little bit of um, maths jargon there, all values of x. So if this bit's always greater than 0, okay, then obviously, it goes without saying, if I times it by 3, okay, so I'm multiplying that number by 3 and I'm adding 2, that is always going to be greater than 0 for all values of x. Therefore, it's always strictly increasing. I'm not sure if you would get the mark for drawing it out and, and stating that you know it's always increasing because you know this is this is the this the, the mathematical way of, of of describing that. Okay, but it's nice that you should you should be able to visualize that and say, well, yeah, that makes sense to me. You know, I'm always going to get a positive value. So, but the, if you're wanting to write it for the SQA for your exam, this term is always going to be positive because any number squared will be a positive number. If I then take that positive and times it by three and add two, I'm definitely always going to have a positive number. Okay, nice one. So that was almost a full video on just one question because I had a little preamble, didn't I? Now let's see if we can quickly get this one done. Find the x-coordinates of the stationary points. So let's just do this quickly. What it's saying is differentiate it. So it's going to give me a half times 4, which is 2. Take away 6x squared. So that's my differential. The stationary points occur when the gradient is equal to 0. And actually, I think we should probably write that, to be honest. We should say stationary points or turning points occur. When dy by dx is equal to zero, and we talked about that at the beginning of the video, didn't we? So then I'm saying, okay, the differential is zero, and that's equal to two x cubed, take away six x squared. So now we have to factorize. So zero is going to be equal to two x squared, and that will give me x take away three. So I know the x coordinates are going to be zero and three. Those values of x, I'm definitely going to have a stationary point. If I wanted to know the full coordinate, I would then substitute it back into the y equals a half x to the 4, take away 2x cubed. I'd substitute these values in here to get the y value. So the big lesson from this one is knowing that your stationary points are when your gradient is equal to 0. So if you've got your, um, any kind of function, you know, some kind of, uh, that's actually a terrible, I don't know why I decided to draw that one, that's rubbish. <laughs> you've got something, or we said that, your stationary points here, Turning point, stationary point, you see that the gradient of that is zero. Here you've got a positive gradient, there you've got zero, and you've got a negative gradient, zero, and then positive. So watch out for that. That's a that's a favorite, favorite question. So words like stationary points should resonate, differentiate. And I think we'll have to stop there and we'll finish off with this question on the next video. I think this is one that was wrong. I think that, that bit in there was wrong. Okay, so see you on the next video.